Who would have thought, eh? Mm. But I, I think that there's, a, there's a couple of stories here that um, I, I think this is very indicative of, um, of how the London market is sort of unfolding. So we, we've talked a lot as property experts over the last year or two about the London market being very, very different to the rest of the UK, almost mm. a sort of market on its own. And I think what our research here uh, with regard to how we've mapped out what's happening in the London market across tube lines really shows that actually London is a sort of myriad of lots and lots of different markets. So if you look at, as you rightly say, Watford, which uh, in terms of demand, but just to explain sort of how we've worked this out, uh, we take uh, a lot of raw data from the likes of Right Move, Zoopla, Prime Location, and so on, and we actually map the ratio between supply and demand. So, in other words, the amount of properties available versus the amount of people that are actually buying them. So, those ratios. And then we track it quarter to quarter so we can obviously see trend lines and so on. So, what, what this demonstrates is that, yes, the likes of Watford, Eastco, Icon, and West Ryslip, and so on, are very, very hot in terms of the amount of demand. Um, but actually, in contrast, Prime Central London might not be a surprise for those that have really kept their eye on the property market over the last few months, um, is in dire straits. And the dif difference between, for instance, Bond Street, Oxford Circus and so on in prime central London in terms of the demand there versus the likes of Rice Slip and Pinner and so on is, I mean, huge, I mean, significant. So it really is quite interesting. Yeah, uh, perhaps not too surprising that people are, are looking at the centre and thinking, well, there's just no way I could afford that. And so people are now looking slightly towards the outskirts. Mm. Uh, East London as well yeah. seems to be proving extremely popular, certainly past Stratford. Yeah, indeed. So, so the next strand of this, I think, is, is looking at you know what's next, which, you know, again, the, the, the clever property investor, yeah. you know, the canny first-time buyer, is always going to be looking at that. So looking at the likes of, for instance, Loughton, Debden, uh, East Ham, Upminster, and so on. So something that, an area where perhaps it's still only 20 or 30 minutes away from the city, but actually as you get sort of maybe, you know, 20 or 30 miles, uh, 20 or 30 minutes out, um, is less than half the cost sometimes. And in fact, if you look at the difference between, say, Bond Street versus Bethnal Green, seven stops down the line. I mean, there's literally an extra zero difference. So obviously, yeah. in, in comparison, um, I think, yeah, the clever buyer is going to now be looking at the likes of East Ham and so on, um, as opposed to perhaps being more central, because they're going to save an awful lot of money. But that, in turn, means that over the next quarter, next half year, we think you'll st start to see very significant price increases in those mm. outlying areas. Yeah, it's a, it's, you've got to be quick, haven't you? There's correlation with lines as well. Certain lines seem to be more popular. I think the Victoria Line, one of them, that people are really keen to live on, and I think that's maybe because it's so quick, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, indeed. The Jubilee line's actually the one to watch, uh, which is sort right. of out of central London, uh, and obviously people are sort of, as we've said, migrating sort of further east, further south, and so on, so the Jubilee line's definitely one to watch. The hottest line at the moment is the central line, you know, just begin again, as we've said, you know, yeah. you can jump on at Upminster and be in the city in 30 minutes, so, uh, so yeah, it's uh, hopefully a, a pretty interesting piece of research. Hot.